The Nordic race was one of the putative sub races into which some late 19th to mid 20th century anthropologists divided the Caucasian race. People of the Nordic type were to be mostly found in Scandinavia, northwestern Europe, and countries surrounding the Baltic Sea, such as Germans and Finnic peoples. The psychological traits of Nordics were described as truthful, equitable, competitive, naive, reserved, and individualistic. Other supposed sub-races were the Alpine race, Dinaric race, East Baltic race, and the Mediterranean race. Nordicism is an ideology of racial separatism which views Nordics as an endangered and superior racial group, most notably outlined in Madison Grant's book The Passing of the Great Race, Arthur de Gobineau's An Essay on the Inequality of the Human Races, and Houston Stuart Chamberlain's The Foundations of the Nineteenth Century. This ideology was popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in northwestern, central, and northern European countries as well as in North America and Australia. The idea of the Nordic phenotype being superior to others was originally embraced as Teutonicism in Germany, Anglo-Saxonism in England and the United States, and Gallicism in France. The notion of the superiority of the Nordic race and the northwestern European nations associated with this supposed race influenced the United States Immigration Act of 1924 which effectively banned or severely limited the immigration of Italians, Jews, and other southern and eastern Europeans and the later Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 and was present in other countries outside of northwestern Europe such as Australia, Canada, and South Africa. By the 1930s, the Nazis claimed that the Nordic race was the most superior of the Aryan race, and constituted a master race <laughs> Topic: Background In the mid-19th century, scientific racism developed the theory of Aryanism, holding that Europeans, Aryans, were an innately superior branch of humanity, responsible for most of its greatest achievements. Arianism was derived from the idea that the original speakers of the Indo-European languages constituted a distinctive race or subrace of the larger Caucasian race. Its principal proponent was Arthur de Gobineau in his essay on the inequality of the human races 1855. Though Gobineau did not equate Nordic peoples with Aryans, he argued that Germanic people were the best modern representatives of the Aryan race. Adapting the comments of Tacitus and other Roman writers, he argued that pure Northerners regenerated Europe after the Roman Empire declined due to racial dilution of its leadership. By the 1880s a number of linguists and anthropologists argued that the Aryans themselves had originated somewhere in Northern Europe. Theodor Posh proposed that the Aryans originated in the vast Rokitno, or Pinsk marshes, then in the Russian Empire, now covering much of the southern part of Belarus and the northwest of the Ukraine, but it was Karl Penka who popularized the idea that the Aryans had emerged in Scandinavia and could be identified by the distinctive Nordic characteristics of blonde hair and blue eyes. The biologist Thomas Henry Huxley agreed with him, coining the term Xanthocroy to refer to fair-skinned Europeans, as opposed to darker Mediterranean peoples, whom Huxley called Melanotroy. It was Huxley who also concluded that the Melanotroy peoples of the Mediterranean race, who he described as dark whites, are of a mixture of the Xanthocroy and Australioids. This distinction was repeated by Charles Morris in his book The Aryan Race, 1888, which argued that the original Aryans could be identified by their blonde hair and other Nordic features, such as dolicocephaly. Long skull. The argument was given extra impetus by the French anthropologist Vache de la Pauge in his book Larian, in which he argued that the dolicocephalic blonde Peoples were natural leaders, destined to rule over more brachycephalic short -skulled peoples. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche also referred in his writings to blonde beasts, amoral adventurers who were supposed to be the progenitors of creative cultures. In On the Genealogy of Morals, 1887, he wrote, in Latin malice, could indicate the vulgar man as the dark one, especially as the black-haired one, as the pre-Aryan dweller of the Italian soil which distinguished itself most clearly through his color from the blondes who became their masters, namely the Aryan conquering race. <laughs> Defining characteristics It was the Russian-born French anthropologist Joseph Deniker that initially proposed. Nordique, meaning simply northern, as an 
ethnic group, a term that he coined. He defined Nordic by a set of physical characteristics, the concurrence of somewhat wavy hair, light eyes, reddish skin, tall stature and a dolichocephalic skull. Of six Caucasian groups Deniker accommodated four into secondary ethnic groups, all of which he considered intermediate to the Nordic, Northwestern, Sub-Nordic, Vistula and Sub-Adriatic, respectively. American economist William Z. Ripley purported to define a Teutonic race in his book The Races of Europe 1899. He divided Europeans into three main subcategories: Teutonic, Teutonish, Alpine and Mediterranean. According to Ripley, the Teutonic race resided in Scandinavia, northern France, northern Germany, Baltic states and East Prussia, northern Poland, northern Russia, Britain, Ireland, parts of Central and Eastern Europe and was typified by light hair, light skin, blue eyes, tall stature, a narrow nose, and slender body type. Georges Vachet de la Pauge had called this race, Homo Europaeus. Madison Grant, in his book The Passing of the Great Race, took up Ripley's classification. He described a Nordic or Baltic type, long-skulled, very tall, fair-skinned, with blonde, brown or red hair and light-colored eyes. The Nordics inhabit the countries around the North and Baltic seas and include not only the great Scandinavian and Teutonic groups, but also other early peoples who first appear in Southern Europe and in Asia as representatives of Aryan language and culture." According to Grant, the "...alpine race." Shorter in stature, darker in coloring, with a rounder head, predominated in Central and Eastern Europe through to Turkey and the Eurasian steppes of Central Asia and Southern Russia. The Mediterranean race, with dark hair and eyes, aquiline nose, swarthy complexion, moderate to short stature, and moderate or long skull was said to be prevalent in Southern Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. Topic. 20th century By 1902 the German archaeologist Gustav Kossina identified the original Aryans Proto-Indo-Europeans with the North German corded ware culture, an argument that gained in currency over the following two decades. He placed the Indo-European Urheimat in Schleswig-Holstein, arguing that they had expanded across Europe from there. By the early 20th century this theory was well established, though far from universally accepted. Sociologists were soon using the concept of a blonde race to model the migrations of the supposedly more entrepreneurial and innovative components of European populations. As late as 1939 Carlton Kuhn wrote that the Poles who came to the United States during the 19th century, and the early decades of the 20th, did not represent a cross-section of the Polish population, but a taller, blonder, longer-headed group than the Poles as a whole. The High brow, low brow distinction, derived from such theories, also became enshrined in language. It was the already mentioned work of sociologist, economist William Z. Ripley which popularized the idea of three biological European races. Ripley borrowed Deniker's terminology of Nordic, he had previously used the term Teuton. His division of the European races relied on a variety of anthropometric measurements, but focused especially on their cephalic index and stature. Compared to Deniker, Ripley advocated a simplified racial view and proposed a single Teutonic race linked to geographic areas where Nordic-like characteristics predominate, and contrasted these areas to the boundaries of two other types, Alpine and Mediterranean, thus reducing the Caucasoid branch of humanity to three distinct groups. By the early 20th century, Ripley's tripartite Nordic, Alpine, Mediterranean model was well established. Most 19th-century race theorists like Arthur de Gobineau, Otto Ammann, Georges Vachet de la Pauge and Houston Stuart Chamberlain preferred to speak of «Aryans», «Teutons» and «Indo-Europeans» instead of «Nordic race». The British-German racialist Houston Stuart Chamberlain considered the Nordic race to be made up of Celtic and Germanic peoples, as well as some Slavs. Chamberlain called those people Celt Germanic peoples, and his ideas would influence Adolf Hitler's Nazi ideology. Only in the 1920s did a strong partiality for Nordic begin to reveal itself, and for a while the term was used almost interchangeably with Aryan. Later, however, Nordic would not be co-terminus with Aryan, Indo-European or Germanic. 
For example, the later Nazi minister for food, Richard Walther Dere, who had developed a concept of the German peasantry as Nordic race, used the term Aryan to refer to the tribes of the Iranian plains. The notion of a distinct northern European race was also rejected by several anthropologists on craniometric grounds. Rudolf Virchow attacked the claim following a study of craniometry, which gave surprising results according to contemporary scientific racist theories on the Aryan race. During the 1885 Anthropology Congress in Karlsruhe, Virchow denounced the Nordic mysticism, while Joseph Kalman, a collaborator of Virchow, stated that the people of Europe, be they German, Italian, English, or French, belonged to a mixture of various races, furthermore declaring that the results of craniology led to struggle against any theory concerning the superiority of this or that European race. Gunther 1922 In Rassenkunde des Deutschen Volkes Racial Science of the German People, published 1922, Hans F. K. Gunther identified five principal European races instead of three, adding the East Baltic race related to the Alpine race and Dinaric race related to the Nordic race to Ripley's categories. This work was influential in Ewald Banz's publication of Die Rassenkarte von Europa in 1925 which combined research by Joseph Deniker, William Z. Ripley, Madison Grant, Otto Hauser, Hans F. K. Gunther, Eugen Fischer and Gustav Krejcik. In The Racial Elements of European History Gunther further identified a race he named Hither Asiatic in southern Spain and Morocco which he believed was carried into Europe through the Moorish invasions. He identified an inner Asiatic race residing in northern Scandinavia and northern Russia. He also identified the Oriental race residing and originating from Arabia, as well as the near Asiatic race originating from Persia. Gunther concluded that Germany was one of the most racially diverse nations of Europe and that all racial groups, in varying distributions, could be found in any European nation. Gunther argued Jews are a nationality and not a race, comprising several racial groups including Nordics, but predominantly hither Asiatic and Oriental. Topic: <laughs> Kuhn 1939 Carlton Kuhn in his book of 1939 The Races of Europe subdivided the Nordic race into three main types: Corded, Danubian, and Celtic, besides a Neo Danubian type and a variety of Nordic types altered by Upper Paleolithic or Alpine admixture. Exotic Nordics are morphologically Nordic types that occur in places distant from the northwestern European center of Nordic concentration. Kuhn takes the Nordics to be a partially depigmented branch of the greater Mediterranean racial stock. He suggests that the Nordic type emerged as a result of a mixture of the Danubian Mediterranean strain with the later corded element. Hence, his two main Nordic types show corded and Danubian predominance, respectively. The third, Celtic or Hallstatt type Kuhn takes to have emerged in the European Iron Age, in Central Europe, where it was subsequently mostly replaced, but found a refuge in Sweden and in the eastern valleys of southern Norway. Kuhn further recognizes the following terminology of earlier authors. Feno Nordic, a hypothetical eastern branch of the Nordic race. Noric, a blonde, dinaricized Nordic. Osterdal type, the classic Iron Age Nordic, as found today in the eastern valleys of Norway. Sub Nordic, a racial group which would fall partly in the East Baltic and partly in the Neo Danubian categories. Trondrelegion type or Tronder type. A variety of Nordic with an excessive corded element and Upper Paleolithic mixture. Anglo-Saxon type. A sub-type of Nordic which contains unreduced Upper Paleolithic mixture. <laughs> Depigmentation theory Kuhn's theory that the Nordic race was a depigmentated variation of the greater Mediterranean racial stock was also supported by his mentor Ernest Albert Houghton who in the same year published Twilight of Man, which notes, "...the Nordic race is certainly a depigmented offshoot from the basic long-headed Mediterranean stock. 
It deserves separate racial classification only because its blonde hair, ash or golden, its pure blue or gray eyes. A 1990s study by Ulrich Muller found that depigmentation of Nordic peoples around the Baltic Sea likely occurred due to vitamin D deficiency amongst peoples living there 10,000 to 30,000 years ago who had a lack of access to vitamin D foods such as dairy products at the time. Depigmentation allowed greater amount of ultraviolet B light to be absorbed through the skin to synthesize to produce vitamin D. Nordicism By the early 20th century the concept of a «masterly» Nordic race had become familiar enough that the British psychologist William McDougall, writing in 1920, stated, Among all the disputes and uncertainties of the ethnographers about the races of Europe, one fact stands out clearly. Namely, that we can distinguish a race of northerly distribution and origin, characterized physically by fair color of hair and skin and eyes, by tall stature and dolicocephaly i.e. long shape of head, and mentally by great independence of character, individual initiative and tenacity of will. Many names have been used to denote this type. It is also called the Nordic type. Nordicists claimed that Nordics had formed upper tiers of ancient civilizations, even in the Mediterranean civilizations of antiquity, which had declined once this dominant race had been assimilated. Thus they argued that ancient evidence suggested that leading Romans like Nero, Sulla and Cato were blonde or red-haired. Some Nordicists admitted the Mediterranean race was superior to the Nordic in terms of artistic ability. However, the Nordic race was regarded as superior on the basis that, although Mediterranean peoples were culturally sophisticated, it was the Nordics who were alleged to be the innovators and conquerors, having an adventurous spirit that no other race could match. The Alpine race was usually regarded as inferior to both the Nordic and Mediterranean races, making up the traditional peasant class of Europe while Nordics occupied the aristocracy and led the world in technology, and Mediterraneans were regarded as more imaginative. Opponents of Nordicism rejected these arguments. The anti Nordicist writer Giuseppe Sergi argued in his influential book The Mediterranean Race 1901 that there was no evidence that the upper tiers of ancient societies were Nordic, insisting that historical and anthropological evidence contradicted such claims. Sergi argued that Mediterraneans constituted the greatest race in the world, with a creative edge absent in the Nordic race. According to him, they were the creators of all the major ancient civilizations, from Mesopotamia to Rome. This argument was later repeated by C. G. Seligman, who wrote that, "...it must, I think, be recognized that the Mediterranean race has actually more achievement to its credit than any other." Even Carlton Kuhn insisted that among Greeks the Nordic element is weak, as it probably has been since the days of Homer. It is my personal reaction to the living Greeks that their continuity with their ancestors of the ancient world is remarkable, rather than the opposite. In the United States In the United States, the primary spokesman for Nordicism was the eugenicist Madison Grant. His 1916 book, The Passing of the Great Race, or the Racial Basis of European History about Nordicism, was highly influential among racial thinking and government policy making. Grant used the theory as justification for immigration policies of the 1920s, arguing that the immigrants from certain areas of Europe, such as Italians and other Southern Europeans and Eastern Europeans, represented a lesser type of European and their numbers in the United States should not be increased. Grant and others urged this as well as the complete restriction of non-Europeans, such as the Chinese and Japanese. Grant argued the Nordic race had been responsible for most of humanity's great achievements, and admixture was race suicide, and unless eugenic policies were enacted, the Nordic race would be supplanted by inferior races. Future President Calvin Coolidge agreed, stating, Biological laws tell us that certain divergent people will not mix or blend. The Nordics propagate themselves successfully. With other races, the outcome shows deterioration on both sides. The Immigration Act of 1924 was signed into law by President Coolidge. This was designed to reduce the number of immigrants from Southern Europe, Southeast Europe, Eastern Europe and Russia, exclude Asian immigrants altogether, and favor immigration from the British Isles, Germany and Scandinavia, while also permitting immigration from Latin America. The spread of these ideas also affected popular culture. 
F. Scott Fitzgerald invokes Grant's ideas through a character in Part of the Great Gatsby, and Hilaire Belloc jokingly rhapsodied the Nordic Man in a poem and essay in which he satirized the stereotypes of Nordics, Alpines, and Mediterraneans. <laughs> Nordicist thought in Germany In Germany, the influence of Nordicism remained powerful. There it was known under the term, Nordischer Gedank, Nordic thought. This phrase was coined by the German eugenicists Erwin Bauer, Eugen Fischer, and Fritz Lenz. It appeared in their 1921 work Human Heredity, which insisted on the innate superiority of the Nordic race. Adapting the arguments of Arthur Schopenhauer and others to Darwinian theory, they argued that the qualities of initiative and will power identified by earlier writers had arisen from natural selection, because of the tough landscape in which Nordic peoples evolved. This had ensured that weaker individuals had not survived. This argument was derived from earlier eugenicist and social Darwinist ideas. According to the authors, the Nordic race arose in the Ice Age, from quite a small group which, under stress of rapidly changing conditions climate, beasts of the chase was exposed to exceptionally rigorous selection and was persistently inbred, thus acquiring the peculiar characteristics which persist today as the exclusive heritage of the Nordic race. Philological, archaeological and anthropological researches combine to indicate that the primal home of the Indo-Germanic i.e. Aryan languages must have been in Northern Europe. They went on to argue that the original Indo-Germanic civilization was carried by Nordic migrants down to India, and that the physiognomy of upper caste Indians disclose a Nordic origin. By this time, Germany was well accustomed to theories of race and racial superiority due to the long presence of the Völkisch movement, the philosophy that Germans constituted a unique people, or Volk, linked by common blood. While Volkism was popular mainly among Germany's lower classes and was more a romanticized version of ethnic nationalism, Nordicism attracted German anthropologists and eugenicists. Hans F. K. Gunther, one of Fischer's students, first defined Nordic thought in his programmatic book Der Nordische Gedanke unter den Deutschen. He became the most influential German in this field. His short Ethnology of the German People 1929 was very widely circulated. In his Rassenkunde des Deutschen Volkes Race Lore of the German Volk, published 1922, Gunther identified five principal European races instead of three, adding the East Baltic race and Dinaric race to Ripley's categories. He used the term Austic instead of Alpine. He focused on their supposedly distinct mental attributes. Gunther criticized the Völkisch idea, stating that the Germans were not racially unified, but were actually one of the most racially diverse peoples in Europe. Despite this, many Volkists who merged Volkism and Nordicism embraced Gunther's ideas, most notably the Nazis. <laughs> Nazi Nordicism Adolf Hitler read Human Heredity shortly before he wrote Mein Kampf, and called it scientific proof of the racial basis of civilization. Its arguments were also repeated by the Nazi ideologist Alfred Rosenberg. In his book The Myth of the Twentieth Century, 1930, Nazi racial theories held the Atlanteans to be a race of Nordic supermen, and Alfred Rosenberg wrote of a Nordic Atlantean master race whose civilization was lost through inward corruption and betrayal. According to Rosenberg, the Nordic race had evolved in a now lost landmass off the coast of Europe, perhaps mythical Atlantis, migrated through northern Europe and expanded further south to Iran and India where it founded the Aryan cultures of Zoroastrianism and Hinduism. Like Grant and others, he argued that the entrepreneurial energy of the Nordics had degenerated when they mixed with inferior peoples. With the rise of Hitler, Nordic theory became the norm within German culture. In some cases the Nordic concept became an almost abstract ideal rather than a mere racial category. For example, Hermann Gotch wrote in 1933 in a book which was banned in the Third Reich that the fact that birds can be taught to talk better than other animals is explained by the fact that their mouths are Nordic in structure. He further claimed that in humans, the shape of the Nordic gum allows a superior movement of the tongue, which is the reason why Nordic talking and singing are richer." Such views were extreme, but more mainstream Nordic theory was institutionalized. 
Hans F. K. Gunther, who joined the Nazi Party in 1932, was praised as a pioneer in racial thinking, a shining light of Nordic theory. Most official Nazi comments on the Nordic race were based on Gunther's works, and Alfred Rosenberg presented Gunther with a medal for his work in anthropology. Eugen Fischer and Fritz Lenz were also appointed to senior positions overseeing the policy of racial hygiene. Madison Grant's book was the first non-German book to be translated and published by the Nazi Reich Press, and Grant proudly displayed to his friends a letter from Hitler claiming that the book was his Bible. The Nazi state used such ideas about the differences between European races as part of their various discriminatory and coercive policies which culminated in the Holocaust. Ironically, in Grant's first edition of his popular book, he classified the Germans as being primarily Nordic, but in his second edition, published after the USA had entered World War I, he had reclassified the now enemy power as being dominated by inferior Alpines. Gunther's work agreed with Grant's, and the German anthropologist frequently stated that the Germans are not a fully Nordic people. Hitler himself was later to downplay the importance of Nordicism in public for this very reason. The standard tripartite model placed most of the population of Hitler's Germany in the Alpine category, especially after the Anschluss. J. Kopp led a movement opposed to Gunther. Kopp took the view that a German nation, all of whose citizens belonged to a German race, in a populationist sense, offered a more convenient socio-technical tool than Gunther's concept of an ideal Nordic type to which only a very few Germans could belong. Nazi legislation identifying the ethnic and racial affinities of the Jews reflects the populationist concept of race. Discrimination was not restricted to Jews who belonged to the Oriental Armenoid race, but was directed against all members of the Jewish ethnic population. The German-Jewish journalist Kurt Caro (1905–1979), who emigrated to Paris in 1933 and served in the British Army from 1943, published a book under the pseudonym Manuel Humbert claiming to unmask Hitler's Mein Kampf, in which he stated the following racial composition of the Jewish population of Central Europe: 23, 8% Lapinid race; 21, 5% Nordic race. 20, 3% Armenoid race, 18, 4% Mediterranean race, 16, 0% Oriental race. By 1939, Hitler had abandoned Nordicist rhetoric in favor of the idea that the German people as a whole were united by distinct spiritual qualities. Nevertheless, Nazi eugenics policies continued to favor Nordics over Alpines and other racial groups, particularly during the war when decisions were being made about the incorporation of conquered peoples into the Reich. In 1942 Hitler stated in private, I shall have no peace of mind until I have planted a seed of Nordic blood wherever the population stand in need of regeneration. If at the time of the migrations, while the great racial currents were exercising their influence, our people received so varied a share of attributes, these latter blossomed to their full value only because of the presence of the Nordic racial nucleus. In his table talk. Hitler described how the presence of German and English soldiers in the combat areas he served in during World War I had, in his view, improved the quality of the young people he saw there in 1940, in a Nordicizing process, the results of which are today, according to Hitler, incontestable. He also said he observed the same process at work in the area of his mountain home near Berchtesgaden, which he described as having, when he first came there, a mongrel population, the quality of which was much improved by the presence of his SS bodyguard regiment, which was responsible for the numbers of strong and healthy children running around the area. Hitler went on to say that this shows that elite troops should really be sent wherever the composition of the people is poor, in order to improve it. Indeed, Hitler and Himmler planned to use the SS, a racial elite chosen on the basis of pure Nordic qualities, as the basis for the racial regeneration of Europe following the final victory of Nazism, addressing officers of the SS Liebstandarte. Adolf Hitler, Himmler stated, The ultimate aim for those eleven years during which I have been the Reichsfuhrer SS has been invariably the same, to create an order of good blood which is able to serve Germany, which unfailingly and without sparing itself can be made use of because the greatest losses can do no harm to the vitality of this order, the vitality of these men, because they will always be replaced, to create an order which will spread the idea of Nordic blood so far that we will attract all Nordic blood in the world, take away the blood from our adversaries, absorb it so that never again, looking at it from the viewpoint of 
grand policy, Nordic blood, in great quantities and to an extent worth mentioning, will fight against us. <laughs> Nordicist thought in Italy In Italy, the influence of Nordicism had a divisive effect in which the influence resulted in northern Italians who regarded themselves to have Nordic racial heritage considered themselves a civilized people while negatively regarding southern Italians as non-Nordic and therefore biologically inferior. Nordicism was controversial in Italy because of common Nordicist perceptions of Mediterranean people, and especially southern Italians, being racially degenerate. The distinction between a superior northern Italy and a degenerate and an inferior southern Italy was promoted by the Neapolitan Carlo Formici, the vice president of the Italian Academy, who in 1921 said that Italy needed a great revolution, a return to the genius of the noble Aryan race, which is after all our race, but that has been overcome by the Semitic civilization and mentality. At least some of the stereotypes about Southern Italians were created by Cesare Lombroso, an Italian Jewish criminologist and anthropologist of Sephardic descent. For his controversial theories, Lombroso was expelled from the Italian Society of Anthropology and Ethnology in 1882. The Lombrosian doctrine is currently considered pseudoscientific. Topic: <laughs> Fascist Nordicism. Italian fascism's stance towards Nordicism changed from being initially hostile to being favorable. Italian fascism strongly rejected the common Nordicist conception of the Aryan race that idealized pure Aryans as having certain physical traits that were defined as Nordic such as fair skin, blonde hair and light eyes. The antipathy by Mussolini and other Italian fascists to Nordicism was over the existence of what they viewed as the Mediterranean inferiority complex that they claimed had been instilled into Mediterraneans by the propagation of such theories by German and British Nordicists who viewed Mediterranean peoples as racially degenerate and thus in their view inferior. However traditional Nordicist claims of Mediterraneans being degenerate due to having a darker color of skin than Nordics had long been rebuked in anthropology through the depigmentation theory that claimed that lighter skinned peoples had been depigmented from a darker skin. This theory has since become a widely accepted view in anthropology. Anthropologist Carlton S. Kuhn in his work The Races of Europe 1939 subscribed to depigmentation theory that claimed that Nordic races' light-colored skin was the result of depigmentation from their ancestors of the Mediterranean race. Mussolini refused to allow Italy to return again to this inferiority complex, initially rejecting Nordicism. In the early 1930s, with the rise to power of the Nazi Party in Germany with Hitler's emphasis on a Nordicist conception of the Aryan race, strong tensions arose between the fascists and the Nazis over racial issues. In 1934, in the aftermath of Austrian Nazis killing Austrian Chancellor Engelbert Dollfuss, an ally of Italy, Mussolini became enraged and responded by angrily denouncing Nazism. Mussolini rebuked Nazism's Nordicism, claiming that the Nazis' emphasizing of a common Nordic, Germanic race, was absurd, saying, A Germanic race does not exist. We repeat, does not exist. Scientists say so. Hitler says so. That Germans were not purely Nordic was indeed acknowledged by Nazi racial theorist Hans F. K. Gunther in his book Rassenkunde des Deutschen Volkes. Racial science of the German people, where Gunther recognized Germans as being composed of five Aryan subtype races Nordic, Mediterranean, Dinaric, Alpine, and East Baltic, while asserting that the Nordics were the highest in a racial hierarchy of the five subtypes. By 1936, the tensions between Fascist Italy and Nazi Germany reduced and relations became more amicable. In 1936, Mussolini decided to launch a racial program in Italy, and was interested in the racial studies being conducted by Giulio Cogni. Cogni was a Nordicist but did not equate Nordic identity with Germanic identity as was commonly done by German Nordicists. Cogni had travelled to Germany where he had become impressed by Nazi racial theory and sought to create his own version of racial theory. On the 11th of September 1936, Cogni sent Mussolini a copy of his newly published book Il Razzismo 1936. Cogni declared the racial affinity of the Mediterranean and Nordic racial subtypes of the Aryan race and claimed that the intermixing of Nordic Aryans and Mediterranean Aryans in Italy produced a superior synthesis of Aryan Italians. 
Cogni addressed the issue of racial differences between northern and southern Italians, declaring southern Italians were mixed between Aryan and non-Aryan races, that he claimed was most likely due to infiltration by Asiatic peoples in Roman times and later Arab invasions. As such, Cogni viewed southern Italian Mediterraneans as being polluted with orientalizing tendencies. He would later change his idea and claim that Nordics and southern Italians were closely related groups both racially and spiritually. His opinion was that they were generally responsible for what is the best in European civilization. Initially Mussolini was not impressed with Cogni's work, however Cogni's ideas entered into the official fascist racial policy several years later. In 1938 Mussolini was concerned that if Italian fascism did not recognize Nordic heritage within Italians, that the Mediterranean inferiority complex would return to Italian society. Therefore, in summer 1938, the fascist government officially recognized Italians as having Nordic heritage and being of Nordic Mediterranean descent and in a meeting with PNF members, and in June 1938 in a meeting with PNF members, Mussolini identified himself as Nordic and declared that previous policy of focus on Mediterraneanism was to be replaced by a focus on Aryanism. Mussolini in July 1938 declared that Italians had strong Nordic heritage particularly through the heritage of the Germanic tribe of the Lombards who conquered Italy after the collapse of the Roman Empire and claimed that the intermixing of Mediterranean Romans with the Nordic Lombards was the last significant racial mixing that occurred in Italy and that none had occurred since. <laughs> Post-Nazi re-evaluation and decline of Nordicism Even before the rise of Nazism, Grant's concept of race lost favor in the USA in the polarizing political climate after World War I, including the Great Migration and the Great Depression. By the 1930s, criticism of the Nordicist model was growing in Britain and America. The British historian Arnold J. Toynbee in A Study of History 1934 argued that the most dynamic civilizations have arisen from racially mixed cultures. In Southern Europe the theory understandably had less influence. This required the abandonment of Grant's gradations of white in favor of the one-drop theory, which was embraced by white supremacists and black leaders alike. Among the latter were Marcus Garvey, and, in part, W. E. B. Du Bois, at least in his later thought, with the rise of Nazism many critics pointed to the flaws in the theory, repeating the arguments made by Sergi and others that the evidence of ancient Nordic achievement is thin when set against the civilizations of the Mediterranean and elsewhere. The equation of Nordic and Aryan identity was also widely criticized. In 1936, M. W. Fodor, writing in The Nation, claimed that racialized Germanic nationalism arose from an inferiority complex. No race has suffered so much from an inferiority complex as has the German. National socialism was a kind of coup method of converting the inferiority complex, at least temporarily, into a feeling of superiority. Some Lombard nationalists took it up in Italy, but even after the establishment of Benito Mussolini's fascist government racial theories were not prominent. Mussolini stated, "...nothing will ever make me believe that biologically pure races can be shown to exist." After World War II, the categorization of peoples into "...superior," and "...inferior." Groups fell even further out of political and scientific favor, eventually leading to the characterization of such theories as scientific racism. The tripartite subdivision of Caucasians into Nordic, Alpine and Mediterranean groups persisted among some scientists into the 1960s, notably in Carlton Kuhn's book The Origin of Races 1962. Already race academics such as A. James Gregor were heavily criticizing Nordicism. In 1961 Gregor called it a philosophy of despair, on the grounds that its obsession with purity doomed it to ultimate pessimism and isolationism. As late as 1977 the Swedish author Bertil Lundman wrote a book The Races and Peoples of Europe mentioning a Norded race. The development of the Kurgan theory of Indo-European origins challenged the Nordicist equation of Aryan and Nordic identity, since it placed the earliest Indo-European speakers around Central Asia and or Far Eastern Europe although according to the Kurgan hypothesis some Proto-Indo-Europeans did eventually migrate into Central and Northern Europe and become the ancestors of the Nordic peoples. The original German term used by Ripley, Theodiscus, 
which is translated into English as Teutonic, has fallen out of favor amongst German-speaking scholars, and is restricted to a somewhat ironical usage similar to the archaic Teutsch, if used at all. While the term is still present in English, which has retained it in some contexts as a translation of the traditional Latin Teutonicus most notably the aforementioned Teutonic order, it should not be translated into German as Teutonish, except when referring to the historical Teutones. <laughs> Early criticism, depigmentation theory Nordicism was subject to substantial criticism. Carlton Stephen Kuhn in his work The Races of Europe 1939 subscribed to depigmentation theory that claimed that Nordic races like colored skin was the result of depigmentation from their ancestors of the Mediterranean race. The depigmentation theory received notable support from later anthropologists, thus in 1947 Melville Jacobs noted. To many physical anthropologists Nordic means a group with an especially high percentage of blondness, which represent a depigmentated Mediterranean." In her work Races of Man 1963, 2nd ed., 1965 Sonia Mary Cole went further to argue that the Nordic race belongs to the "...brunette Mediterranean," Caucasoid division but that it differs only in its higher percentage of blonde hair and light eyes. The Harvard anthropologist Claude Alvin Villy Jr. also was a notable proponent of this theory, writing, "...the Nordic division, a partially depigmized branch of the Mediterranean group." Collier's Encyclopedia as late as 1984 contains an entry for this theory, citing anthropological support. Early 21st century genetic studies have provided new insights into the origins of Irish people as well as their neighbours from other parts of the British Isles. Correspondingly, researchers in the field have suggested that migrations from prehistoric Iberia can be viewed as the primary source for their genetic material, having demonstrated marked similarities with modern representatives of the aforementioned time period in that of the Basque people. However, the majority of Irish males fall under the R1B sub clade L21, which is quite rare for Basques. Lundman 1977. In his work The Races and Peoples of Europe 1977, the Swedish anthropologist Bertil Lundman introduced the term Norded to describe the Nordic race, described as follows The Norded race is light-eyed, mostly rather light-haired, low-skulled and long-skulled tall and slender, with more or less narrow face and narrow nose, and low frequency of blood type gene Q. The Norded race has several subraces. The most divergent is the Falish subrace in western Germany and also in the interior of southwestern Norway. The Falish subrace is broader of face and form. So is the North Atlantid subrace, the North Occidental race of Deniker, which is like the primary type, but has much darker hair. Above all in the oceanic parts of Great Britain the North Atlantic subrace is also very high in blood type gene R and low in blood type gene P. The major type with distribution particularly in Scandinavia is here termed the Scandid or Scando-Nordid subrace. Forensic anthropology Some forensic scientists, pathologists and anthropologists up to the 1990s continued to use the tripartite division of Caucasoids, Nordic, Alpine and Mediterranean, based on their cranial anthropometry. The anthropologist Wilton M. Krogman for example identified Nordic racial crania in his work, The Human Skeleton in Forensic Medicine, 1986, as being, Dolichokranic. In his work, Forensic Pathology, published in 1991, Bernard Knight, a professor of forensic pathology, also uses the tripartite model and identifies the Nordic race based on its dolichocephalic skull shape. Forensic anthropologists of the 21st century however no longer continue to use the tripartite division of Caucasoids, but instead only recognize Caucasoid, Negroid and Mongoloid through analysis of skeletal remains and not subraces of these racial groups. <laughs> 21st century In the 21st century there is a prevailing view amongst many anthropologists and biologists that completely pure 
Races do not and have not existed. The 2014 edition of the World Factbook, produced by the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States, describes Spain's population as a composite of Mediterranean and Nordic types. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Population genetics. The emergence of population genetics further undermined the categorization of Europeans into clearly defined origin groups. A 2007 study on the genetic history of Europe found that the most important genetic differentiation in Europe occurs on a line from the north to the southeast northern Europe to the Balkans, with another east-west axis of differentiation across Europe. However, Finns seem to mark an exception in European genetic groups, as they seem not to share strong genetic relationship ties with other European countries, but instead appear to be genetically a rather isolated group. When looking at the Y chromosome, there are three large haplogroups which account for most of Europe's patrilineal descent. <laughs> See also